All right, guys, welcome back to episode six of MMA Unhinged podcast. I'm joined by Josh, my uh, my, my fellow colleague. And uh, recently, we've got a big announcement of UFC 249, what was meant to go ahead at April 18th. Well, obviously, didn't go ahead because of the, the virus, what's going around in the world at the moment. And it's uh, been rescheduled to May 9th. And there's uh, been introduced with uh, new fights on the card. So we're going to talk about that in the podcast. We want to talk about uh, the 400 followers that we hit on Instagram. And... Um, we're going to talk about uh, will Habib versus Tony ever happen? Uh, future plans for the channel, and uh, pretty much it. And general discussions and UFC mm-hmm. discussions. So we're we'll we're, we're carry on with the UFC two four nine card, which is he- uh, headlined by the Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. What a fight for the interim lightweight championship! Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you just make yeah, you, you make he's got no times. Oh. <laughs> All right, sorry. So obviously, there's going to be a little bit of uh, delay and stuff in this podcast. Mm-hmm. So we we we're going to apologise for that. But, um, yeah, yeah Tony Ferguson podcast. versus yeah, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje for the interim lightweight championship. It's going to be a hell of a fight. It's going to be a, I think it's going to be a dog fight. I think we're going to see a real war. Yeah, hundred percent. Be very surprised I like if it, I don't think any no one getting finished. I'll be a five round decision like. I reckon it'll be bloody. Yeah, and they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna give the fans entertainment that, because like we've missed so much UFC. Mm-hmm. I think they want to like come back with like a huge, huge fight. It'll be worth the wait. Yeah, definitely. Is I mean, I'm looking at the card right now and it looks insane. Yeah. Top top to bottom looks really good. Like even the prelims. So I, mm, like normally the prelims, prelims you good. don't get big fights on, but we've got like Anthony Pettis, Cerrone, uh, Verdum's back. Um. Jacare and Uriah Hall. And then on the early prelims, you got Vincent Luke and Nico Price too. Uh, Bryce Mitchell's back on the card. So it's a great card all round. I don't I don't get how Hardy and DeCastro got on the main card like, but No, I, don't. I think they're just trying to push Greg Hardy. Yeah, to be they really are. Like he's uh, he's on the main card above a Doom, Pettis, Cerrone, Uriah Hall. Like, but in the in the co-main event, we got uh, Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz getting a title shot after not competing for a, roughly about three years. I think yeah, it's three, so four years, maybe coming up to four years. His last fight versus uh, Cody Garbrandt at UFC two two hundred seven, um, and we are and now we're at UFC two four nine. So that kind of speaks for itself that how long he has competed for. Um, so yeah, he gets a title shot after about four years away from the sport. A lot of people had a controversy whether she should get the shot and a lot of people say you know he's the greatest 135 of all time and he should get the shot whenever he wants etc but does he really deserve the shot josh i mean i think he's only getting the shot because there's no one else really mm. like, i guess obviously supposed to be Cejudo v aldo but um that can happen yeah tw- uh, 30th of december was the last time cruz fought 2016 so that's Almost four years. Yeah, almost four years. Really. Four four years this 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 year, but it's that's three years and a bit. Mm. And he's getting the title shot. A lot of people lot, that didn't go didn't go too too well down with the MMA community. A lot of people didn't think he deserved it, but Dana White backed up his uh, backed up his decision and said some words about why he chose Cruz. But he's probably the only guy probably available at, yeah. the, at the moment. Would do what's what's happening in the world at the moment. He's probably the only guy that's actually out there that can actually fight Henry Cejudo. It ha- kind of it kind of has to be like an American already in the country. Yeah, because that's know, why Aldo's like... probably not here. But Aldo's probably in that? on the card. That's probably why Al- yeah. Aldo isn't on the card because yeah, he was sched- Henry Cejudo was originally scheduled to fight Jose Aldo uh, at at UFC two four nine or was it uh, UFC two fifty actually in Brazil? Yeah. And then he got then he got pulled forward, but then Aldo couldn't compete. I believe he got an injury, but obviously I don't think he would have been able able to make it anyway. But uh, the the card is stacked. Uh, Ngarni versus Rosenstrike that got moved forward to the UFC two four nine card. That's just a that's just a battle of power, a battle of whoever hits that right hand first. And uh, but it's obviously it's got to be tactical and strategic, and we're going to see who just. Who's, we're gonna see who's the better fighter, really. I, I think Ngannou's gonna win. I think he's yeah. more tactical. He's been he's been up there for longer. I think Roger is gonna learn from this, and he will come back stronger. And uh, it's it's a really good matchup because they both got 
tremendous amount of power. And we've seen what happens with Rosenstrike. Rosenstrike can carry that power for all the way to the fifth round, as we saw against Overeem. Overeem was kind of, you know, piecing him up on the feet with his uh, Overeem's kickboxing. And then the fifth round, Rosenstrike, you know, launched a heavy right hand, hit him right on the clean on the chin. And we see what happened to his lip. Overeem's lip didn't look good. So yeah, that's a really good fight. Um, I do see Ngani winning it, though. I've got Ngani winning. I think Ngani's just a uh, more... Uh, more experienced Rosen Strike really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Rosen Strike if he if he loses will will obviously come back better. And then you may, maybe yeah. do it again down the line. Uh, Rosen Strikes. Oh, hundred percent. More experienced and even even looking at the fight, it just it just looks so good. Both just power. That everyone's it's just like a oh, what I'm looking for. It's just like a, a community MMA community's dream. Yeah. Just to watch in power versus power, just going at it swinging. That's what we thought with Ngani versus Derek Lewis. So if this happens with this fight, he'd be let down really. But hopefully, I don't think it. I don't think it'll go that way. But, uh, after that, we've got uh, Jeremy Stevens versus Calvin K Calvin Kata in featherweight division. Stevens uh, hit a quite hit a rock at the moment. I think he's on a three fight losing streak. At the moment, he recently lost to Zabit Magasherov, yeah, I believe. Lost to Aldo, yeah, and Zabit. And, then and Calvin Keita also lost to uh, Zabit. So they both lost to the same person recently. I think, oh, hold on, no. Stevens lost to Yair recently. Yeah, but then he had that, he yeah, had that no contest with him. And then they had the, uh, mm. the rematch. Which he lost. Um, I, don't, I don't know too much about these guys. I don't know who's going to win this fight. It... I, I couldn't really... Uh, um, if I was going to give it to someone, I'd probably give it to Jeremy Stevens because he's more experienced. He's been there, been around. Yeah, I feel like he would just well. have that experience. Just, you know, he knows what's going to happen. He can adapt. He, uh, he has a little bit of wrestling. He can use his wrestling. But he's got heavy, heavy hands. And uh, if, yeah, if Kato gets Steven hit by one of them hands, he could be lights out. We've seen it multiple times with Stevens. After that, we've got uh, Hardy. Greg Hardy versus Jorgen De Castro. Jorgen De Castro upsetting... Oh, what's that guy who looks like Taito Vasa? Uh, Justin Taffer. Justin Taffer. Yeah. He, uh, Jorgen De Castro upsetting Justin Taffer in Australia. What a what a win for that was him and uh, put him on the map quite quick. Uh, he's got a t he's got a tough test in front of him though. To be fair, Greg Hardy, who's uh, recently come into the MMA scene, and uh, he's in the UFC. His last fight, I believe, was against Alexander Volkov, where yeah. he went to a decision. I believe that was his last fight. Look good in that fight though. Against, mm. well, he looked good in that fight against Volkov, especially on short notice as well. Mm. He was he came in at short notice yeah. versus Alexander, Alexander Volkov, who's a really good guy, really staple guy in the division, the heavyweight division, and it's a really tricky fight for Greg Hardy because he's probably Greg Hardy's never fought someone who's bigger than him, who's taller than him, because you know Volkov is a massive, massive dude, yeah. and uh, he had reach on Greg Hardy. And Greg Hardy's never come up upon that in his uh, MMA career. So, but Greg Hardy did really well in that fight. You know, he went all he went the distance. He showed he showed people, he doubt people who were doubting him, are probably now like, oh, you know, he's actually got some ability in his uh, in, in his uh, in his MMA ability. But he's got a uh, Jurgen De Castro in front of him, and uh, yeah, he's just heavy hitters. Really, same again, yes. just like Engarni Rosenstrike. Just two they, big guys, quite heavy hitters, mm -hmm. two big hitters. They're gonna go out. In the prelims, prelims main event, we have Cowboy Cerrone versus Pettis, Anthony Pettis, number two. Obviously, Pettis got the advantage in the first one, I believe, if I remember. I think Anthony Pettis won the first one, mm. but I believe that one, that one was at well, uh, that one was at lightweight. I, be I believe that's right. I think uh, Anthony Pettis won. Yeah, Anthony Pettis won. One. Yeah, I think it was by a body kick. Yeah, well, it was a kick to the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in 2013. Uh, so they fought in 2017 and uh, Anthony Pettis won by uh, body kick. So we're only on a uh, what, the, what, that, their last fight? Yeah, when they fight. It was like, it was... Oh, 2013. They fought in 2013. Yeah, that was their yeah. first fight in 2013. Anthony Pettis won by body kick. So that was a long time ago. They're both different fighters now. They both got older, definitely got older. Um, I believe that they're, they're becoming uh, um, Cowboy is now 37 years of age so you know he's um, he's he probably won't be around for much longer and uh, Anthony Pettis is still 33 though 
You know, he's still, yeah. he's still got a bit of time in front of him, but he's obviously slowed down in the recent years. He, lo he just lost to Diego Ferreira by rare naked choke in round two. You know, this is like Diego Ferreira, we know how good his jiu-jitsu is. And, you know, he tapped out Anthony Pettis, who has really, really, really good jiu-jitsu. We know how good his jiu-jitsu is. In past years, we've seen him submit some really, really good guys. But I see Anthony Pettis slowing down in the recent years. I don't think it's far off of him following his brother to maybe Bellator. Yeah, I think I think this should uh, this should be Cerrone's last fight. Like yeah. after watching the Connor one, retirement. Yeah, after watching the Connor one, I thought it was his last fight, but obviously not. Uh, so I think after this one, they should he should call it a day, especially if he loses. If he loses, hundred uh, percent. Cowboys four on a three fight, fight losing streak. Yeah. He's been stopped in every single fight. Not what you not what you want to see. Yeah, especially if he gets stopped in this one, then a hundred percent. Yeah. If you beat Pettis, definitely. Then I still I still would say call it a day because he's the guys above in the division. There's just two. He's got much younger guys in the division ahead of him, and he's just, I don't think he'll be any of them. So I think uh, after this fight, one hundred percent call yeah. it a day. Uh, moving on to the next fight, which is uh, we have uh, Alexei Olenek versus uh, Fabricio Word Doom coming back since. Hold on. March the 17th of March which was in UFC London against Alexander Volkov where he got knocked out so he's been away for about two years and uh, I think he got I think he got popped I believe I don't know what he got popped by that, I can't I can't remember what he got popped by but he definitely got popped by USADA but I can't remember what it was I think it might have been might have been PEDs I'm not too sure but yeah he faces Alexei Olenek who just came off a win over Maurice Green but Fabrice Elwer Doom, you know, he's getting old, but obviously we know how... But what interests me about this, if it goes to the ground, oh my word, it will be insane. Alexei Olenek, we know how good his grappling is, and we know oh, how good yeah, Fabrice Elwer Doom's grappling is. If it goes to the ground, it will be an absolute grappling, like, sent... It will be just... It should be absolutely insane. I'd love to see it. I, I want to see that. I want to see the transitions. I want to see the submissions, attempts. It should be so, so good. So, I, um, who do I see winning this fight? They're both quite old. Uh, so yeah, kind of... Both getting the rage now. Especially with mm -hmm. Verdun being out the octagon for quite a bit. But, um, I think Alexio Lernick will have this. Yeah, I think. Uh, I, I don't know, though. I, I don't want to call, really. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take Alexio Lernick on this one. I think. I've... I think uh, I think we I think it won't be long uh, till for I think this is his last fight on his UFC contract for Riso Werdum. Mm. So could we see him maybe going off to Bellator after this? Who knows? I mean, a lot of fight, a lot of old fighters have went off to Bellator, and so he he could join them. But heavyweight as well. I uh, actually originally I've been watching a uh, season ten of the Ultimate Fire, and it's crazy to look back at Roy Nelson. Oh and, yeah. Uh, just. It's just insane. I still Brandon need to finish Sharp it off. I've been. What's that? Is that the one with like Brendan Sharp and that in it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's crazy to like look back and see how these fights have developed in yeah, recent sure. years. And if you you look at them where they are with then and now where you look at them where they are now, Brendan Sharp on the show said he wanted to become a UFC champion. You know, become great. And now he's just like a he's just a talk analyst. You know, he's, he analyzes fights. And uh, Roy Nelson fights in Bellator and. Most of the guys on there probably hid under the radar, except for Matt Mitrione. There's a few on there that will come out, but there's not a lot that kind of really made it to stardom. Mm. But uh, obviously, Roy Nelson won it, and James McSweeney. He's he's from England. He's he's now got a record in a May of fifteen and eighteen. So he he fell he he's fell off a bit, but um he's always he's also been known to not have a chin. So, and not uh, so you know. Uh, next fight we've got is uh, Carla Esparza versus Michelle Watson. Just got a notification from MMAfighting.com. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, Carla Esparza versus Michelle Watson. Um, this one I don't know too much about. I know Michelle Watson just recently lost a decision to Joanna Jacek, yeah. where Joanna uh, outclassed her with her kickboxing, and we saw. Uh, Michelle wasn't on the sort of level of the elite fighters in the shortweight division, the female shortweight division. But Esparza... Um, she's on a two-fight winning streak, Esparza. She's on a two-fight winning streak? Yeah. Let, 
Let, let me let me see who she be. She's fifteen and six in her May. Uh, she be she is be. Oh God, that's a hard name. Verena Jandiroba. God, don't ask me to pronounce that again. She's also be Alexa Grasso, and uh, she fight in Michelle Watson. These two are very. These two are veterans in the UFC. Yeah, you know, they're they're. They've been around, they've done it. Uh, obviously, uh, Carla Esparza was the first ever strawweight uh, champion in the UFC before getting beat by Joanna Jancic. But these have been around in the UFC. They fought everyone in that strawweight division. They fought the likes of Tatiana Suarez, uh, Claudia Gadela, Cynthia Carvillo, um, Randall Marcos, uh, Joanna Jancic. I've mentioned. So they've, they've been around, and these two like are veterans, and uh, I think it will be their their last push, maybe. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins, it will be their last push. Who does he win in? Probably Michelle Watson. I think she's. I think she's more. Um, I think she's got. I think she's more dangerous. She's got. She's got the submissions. She's got the. She got. She's got a striking. But I just I think Michelle Watson is uh I think she's been she's been at the top a lot longer than Carlos Suarez, even yeah, though definitely. Carlos Suarez won the the title. She's been there at the top, close to the top for a lot of years. Uh she obviously uh she had a free fight win streak beating Courtney Casey, Felice Herrig and uh, Carolina Karakwich and then lost to Jana Jacek. And now she fights Carlos Suarez at UFC two four nine uh, on May seventh if that goes ahead. Fingers crossed. Uh, after that, we got uh, Uriah Hall versus uh, Jacare Souza. Jacare Souza dropping back down to 185 after his uh, one fight stint at 205, after losing a, a close decision, mm, maybe a, a close decision to Jan Blakovic. So he, he he decides to drop back down instead of having another fight at 205, and he fights uh, Uriah Hall, and uh, everyone's everyone's fought Uriah Hall in the middleweight division. It seems yeah, like. 100. <laughs> yeah. Um, who does he win this? Oh my god, I don't know. Um, if it goes to the ground, Jack Ray, obviously. If Jack Ray gets him down, you know, he uses his jiu jitsu. We know how good his jiu jitsu is. But if it stays on the feet, uh, I, 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 I'll put Hall. Hall is a favourite, obviously, if it stays on the feet. We know how good his striking is. You know, he's quick, easy, he can spin techniques from everywhere. Oh, if it stays on the feet, and then uh, I think you're right. Who's got the edge? Mm. You know, he can throw a spin technique out of anywhere. He doesn't really telegraph it. You know, he can just fire it, and uh, he probably could catch Hall. Uh, no, in the Hall, probably could catch uh, Jack Ray. And uh, I probably um, I, I see Uriah Hall getting a nod. I'm getting a nod. I think he just might be a bit quicker than Jack Ray. I think Jack Ray's getting on a bit. Getting yeah, old. that's him on three Hall. losses in a row. That if Jack Ray loses, who's that? Uh, Jack Ray if he loses. Master Manson, Black, Yan, and then if he loses a hole. Yeah. Um, after Hall's that on fight. Two fight uh, What's that? It's on a two fight win streak, isn't he? Uriah Hall. Who's he beat? Um, oh, he's beat on Lewis El Elias Firadori. He beat Elias yeah. Firadori. How did I forget that? He did, didn't he? I'm not sure. Who? Uriah Hall? Yeah, he beat Elias Firadori. His last fight was. Uh, Bevon Lewis and Antonio Carlos Jr. Oh, and he man, I was wrong. Oh, my God. Then he, he won, won both of them. He lost to Costa just before that. Everyone's fought your eye hole. Yeah. Dagon Musassi, yeah. Derek Bronson, Paolo <laughs> Costa. You know, he's, he's fought everyone. Robert Whittaker. He's fought literally probably everyone in the middleweight division that you could probably name. He, he, he's, he's been about. He's fought Tiago Santos. He's fought Costel Filippou. He's fought he's fought a lot of guys in the middleweight division, and he's a uh, he's he's he's, he's a middleweight staple. He's been there a, a long, long time. But I this is what I think is probably the, one of the most exciting fights on the prelims. The one bef just before it, which is Vincent Luque versus uh, Nico Price. The this is going to be a hell of a fight. Nico Price, we know how unorthodox he is. He can throw up an up kick from anywhere in guard, as we saw against James Vick. He uh, threw an up kick, and knocked him out. With an up kick, his uh, his uh, his heel right on the chin, and uh, uh, James and James Vick can 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 take it, but James Vick uh, got exposed for his chin, his weak chin. Even stepping up weight class, it can really help him.
but yeah this is a really really good fight this is going to be a firework fight i think like, these two are going to go out and probably one of the fight night fight of the night contenders yeah 100 percent. it's going to be a good fight um i see nico price win it this time vincent luke just lost a close decision to stephen wonderboy thompson and uh nico price just is just be uh, uh james vick um I yeah, I see Nico Price win. I feel like he's too unorthodox. He's he's hard to predict what he's going to do, and I think I, I don't think he'll get knocked out. I think it will just be or anyone will get knocked out. Yeah, I think same. It'll just be like a, yeah, decision. Uh, we go to decision, but it'll mm -hmm. be like a really really good fight, a firework fight, going back and forth, and uh, Nico Price will get a close decision. After that, we have well before that I should say we have Bryce Mitchell versus Charles Rosa. This is a this is a decent little fight, to, especially on the second fight of the card. This is a really really good fight. Uh, Bryce Mitchell just got that um, twist up versus Matt Sales, and uh, that's the second I believe is the second or third ever twister. Um, I think it's the second. Mm. Yeah, because uh, was it I Zombie think, who got the first? Um, no, was it Zombie or Chung Sung John? Who's that? Oh no, I should know this, but I don't. And I know it's a Korean guy. A Korean guy got the first one. Yeah, that's all I know. Kapto, uh, Leonard Garcia. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's yeah, Korean this zombie? Is a, yeah, this it is was. a good fight. What's that? Josh? Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. I thought we lost connection. Uh, uh, I just, you went silent. I was like, um... yeah. All right, I feel, I feel like Bryce Mitchell will get the nod. Yeah, I say, I think he's more more talented. You know, he's uh he's twelve and zero, and he's uh he's twelve and zero, and he's uh two and zero in the UFC. Obviously, he lost to uh Brad Cantona. Well, he's three and zero in the UFC actually. Sorry, he lost to Brad Cantona in the oh my fire, but that that doesn't count as a record. But Brad Cantona has now been released by the UFC, so. That's an uh, interesting, interesting fact. And, uh, yeah, so he's 3-0 in the UFC. He's had uh, one one finish and two decisions after that. I, I do believe it won't it won't be a finish. Uh, I think it'll just go decision again. And uh, I think Bryce Mitchell will get the, get, get the nod and get a win and go 4-0 in the UFC. Uh, but to kicking off the UFC 249 card, we have... Oh, I forgot his first name. Is it Ryan Spann versus Sam Alvey? Smiling Sam Alvey, yeah. yeah. Um, so that kicks off the card, which is a really good, really good fight. Yeah. You know, it's really underrated. People are probably sleeping on it a little bit. But um, I do believe Ryan Spann was originally scheduled to fight uh, Paul Craig at uh, UFC London on March 21st. Yeah, Ryan so, Spann and, then it was, and he's now got uh, a veteran. He's got a Sam Alvey to fight. This is going to be a good fight. I think the younger guy in Ryan, will, Ryan Spann will take it. Sam Alvey uh, on a three loss streak as well. What's that? Sam Alvey's on a three fight loss streak at the moment. He's on a three fight loss streak. Yeah, Ryan Spahn is on. I swear he's on quite a good win streak actually. Yeah, he's lost to Kilton Abaru. I don't know who that is. Jimmy Crew and Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. A seven fight win streak for Ryan Spahn. Four in the UFC and then three at LFA. It's also more like Devin Clark, Bruno Rodrigo Nogueira, Luis Enrique, and then he got a he got a win on the Contender Series. So that'll be a good fight as well. A kick off a short. It's an all around good card. Even though even the it's early a, prelims it's are a really good card, yeah. like watchable. Sometimes mm. sometimes there's a bit of throwaway fights on there, but. No, the Nico yeah. Price and Vicente Luque on there, yeah. like that's it's insane. Though. It's a really good card. He's mm -hmm. put it, to prefer, in the situation that Dana White is in. He's put he's produced a really good card. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see if it. Hopefully, it still goes ahead. March 9th, we're in the April twenty seventh for the minute, so hopefully, it still goes ahead. But we haven't heard any news. I believe the location was being set. Oh, it came out the other day. It's in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, that's what it says. Is it in uh, Florida? That's what it says on here, yeah. It says Jacksonville, okay, Florida. So, uh, uh, the location, we believe, is in Florida. But I, don't, I, I think that's confirmed. I'm not too sure. I, yeah. I know it came out the other day, but I can't remember off the top of my head. 
Uh, so uh, that's the UFC 249 card and um, where we're at. And uh, so, yeah. So recently, uh, the virus, I think, I, I don't have to say the name of the virus. I think everyone knows yeah, what we're talking about. Yeah, everyone knows what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, that's that's really what not caused us not to do videos. And that's why, that's why we're doing a podcast like this. We actually tried to do a podcast a few weeks ago. And uh, my recording, and I recorded it, and uh, the audio wasn't there. It just didn't work. <laughs> so uh, that we kind of were like, what the fuck, man. Uh, so we kind of gave up that day. And we, we said we'll try again. And here we are trying again, probably about four weeks down the line. And uh, so, yeah, the virus hasn't let us do videos, and that's a bit shit. So uh, hopefully when the virus goes away, we'll be able to get interviews. Well, we could probably get interviews now. We, we're trying to get some interviews lined up, mm. but the interviews will be different. Instead of two of us, it will just be one one interview in the fire yeah. and we just take turns like that etc um so yeah that's pretty much on the virus and why we can't do videos we can't actually travel to each other's houses and to like you know do do videos do podcasts and etc uh recently on uh instagram we hit 400 followers and uh, we thank you for that and uh but and obviously the virus has slowed down oh. our our followings and massively and uh so we're we're, we're being impacted for that but uh, 400 followers is good. Our, our goal still remains 100 a month, but it kind of looks unlikely with the virus. Yeah. Which, it was, it was going so well. Though, it was going yeah, we so well, and then so well. the virus hit and kind of shot soon us down a bit. As soon as it's over, we're going to go straight back out. We're going to work harder, harder, much yeah. harder. We're going to get we're going to we're going to get interviews, interviews, interviews. You know, quick. And uh, um, most events are being cancelled. Well. Uh, we actually got two events uh, what have been scheduled. We uh, there was the May ones on a Wednesday, ones on a Saturday. I forgot. Oh my god, hold on. Uh, we got May ninth. Uh, we have a May thirteenth card on this Wednesday. That is a uh, headlined by Anthony Smith versus Glover Cesaro, I believe, or it's the other way around. I can't remember. So we have uh, an event on the May thirteenth on the Wednesday, and then we have a uh, an event on the Saturday sixteenth. Uh, that's headlined by Alistair Overeem versus Walt Harris. So uh, UFC's trying to probably, you know, pick up some steam a bit here and uh, try and um, put up events that they've uh, they've missed. And they're going to probably we're probably going to have a lot of stacked week weeks with a UFC so they're making up for events they've missed. So we're probably going to see a lot of uh, Wednesday night fights coming up. Is that is that yeah? Yeah, Josh. Us. Definitely. It, it, we should be able to get some with everyone being at home, but obviously it's just like when they're at home, they'll be with like their family and stuff, so it may not be free all the time, but we're trying. Um, what else is there? UFC discussion. Uh, there's not really, much, not really much to discuss, really. We said two four nine. Um, it is Jacksonville, Florida. That is where the events are going to take place. At the Vi Star Veterans Memorial Arena. I think he's just disconnected from Discord. Hello. Um, what was that? What was going to happen? Yeah, the Vice the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena is where the events will take well it says on here the events will take place. May 9th was two four nine and then the they did schedule another one. I think it was May sixteenth. Which was I can't remember the top of my head. Paul Harris and Arsenal oh, Room. It would be a good fight as well, like we meant it. They, that was meant to happen like a couple weeks after London, but it didn't happen obviously. So it's all happened this time. And Discord isn't working. <laughs> That's why you probably can't hear him right now. Unless he's talking unless he's talking. He obviously can.
Yeah, it just keeps to disconnecting. It's I'm you can still hear me. Hopefully he can hear me. <laughs> yeah, I'll see these podcasts won't be perfect because it has to be like, over Discord. Which is in the grey to do. Um But yeah, can't do much really. It is this looks bad, but obviously best we can do is not not no bad we can really do you know what i mean like, i'm sure everyone who watches this will understand as well and discourse is not working at all now <laughs> fuck's sake i knew it was gonna go wrong this part probably get cut out of the podcast so i'm just talking discord's not even connecting <laughs> fuck hell Thirty-two minutes or so far. I mean, two minutes of it has been me just chatting absolutely rubbish, like. But I mean, I don't know if he's still speaking. I can see the little green box. So it says he's speaking, but obviously I don't think you can. Hear, I can't hear him. I don't know if he can hear me either. It's got great. This is a problem with the, the Wi-Fi, but I don't know. 35, well, 35 minutes now, but five minutes to me, just chatting absolute rubbish. You know. Also, follow all the pages. Yeah, so unfortunately, we'll have to end it now, really. Um, We'll cover UFC 249. Well, went for every fight. Um, wait, I don't know if he can still hear me, that's the thing. Right, so now nah, it's a problem with day school. I mean, like I said, we went through 2 FC perfectly, but for every fight, um, but Discord seems to not be working for some reason. So, um, yeah, we just talked that. So I was typing there, I was typing there, see if you could hear us, but nah, no one can hear each other. Uh, yeah, so we'll. we'll the other one might happen down the line, it just depends because I was, I don't know because, yeah, like I said, it, the other one might happen, it just depends really if people are free, unless people are busy. Yeah, I don't know when this will be up, so this will be up whenever, but hopefully two, UFC 219 goes ahead. Follow Emma and Hinged on Instagram, Twitter, discuss stuff on YouTube, what else do we do? Facebook, uh, the website's up. Obviously, we need it, I keep doing more on that. But yeah, I said it's just when people are free and not busy. Um, we've also done a thing where if if Emma and Hinge gets five hundred followers by the end of May, so it'll be it's basically May now, so the end of next month, I will be getting my hair like Dan Hardy's. So yeah, so get that happened, and then this thing can get changed bright red in the Mohawk. So yeah, cheers for watching and. Sorry to be a bit shit. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>